Good morning dear students this is your teacher Neela Melawat and today we'll start a new chapter that is chapter 9 biomolecules and as the name suggests dear students biomolecules means the molecules which are present in the living organisms so let's see what we'll be dealing with it in this chapter what are the various topics so the topics that we'll be doing in this chapter are first how to analyze the chemical composition second the primary and the secondary metabolites biomacromolecules proteins polysaccharides nucleic acids the structure of protein the nature of bonding linking monomers in a polymer the dynamic state of body constituents that is the concept of metabolism the metabolic basis of living the living state and the enzymes so we'll be dealing with the following topics in this particular chapter <coughs> now let's start with a very basic thing as i was talking about i was explaining you what are biomolecules bio let's split this word biomolecules so bio as we know living and molecules means the molecules right the molecules which are made up of atoms so biomolecules they are basically the chemical compounds the chemical substances that are observed that are found in living organisms the various types of biomolecules are present in the living body of an organism and they may be organic as well as inorganic so both the categories are included here we know that in nature dear students if you look around yourself you'll find that there is a wide variety of living organisms in our biosphere now dear students do you know what is a biosphere see life only exists in biosphere so can you tell me what is a biosphere see there are three spheres on our earth the sphere of air which is called as atmosphere the sphere of land which is called as lithosphere the sphere of water is called as hydrosphere and all these spheres they together constitute another sphere which is called as biosphere so where all your existing life is present right now if we compare or if we perform an elemental analysis elemental analysis means if you want to if we find out what are the various elements present in a plant or an animal tissue so if we perform an elemental analysis on a plant tissue or animal tissue plant tissue means you can take as leaf you can take the stem any part of the plant an animal tissue any part of the animal you can take liver you can take any other organ or any tissue okay or we can take a microbial paste so we will find that after the elemental analysis we will obtain the elements like carbon hydrogen oxygen and etc now similarly if we perform an elemental analysis on the earth crust as well dekhi pehle jo humne elemental analysis kiya hai wo humne kiya hai plant tissue or animal tissue pa now we are performing it on the earth crust so we again will obtain a similar list okay so we are when we are talking about a living tissue that is your plant or animal or any microbial paste so we are obtaining list of elements and when we are doing an elemental analysis on earth crust as well we are obtaining the same list while your earth crust is on living right So what is the difference between the living and non-living when both of them they are made up of the same elements? So when you analyze it very closely, when you analyze the components of both of them very closely, we will observe that although they are made up of the same elements, but the living organisms they have an abundance of carbon hydrogen. Means they contain more of carbon. hydrogen and oxygen while the earth crust it contains less of them 
so although both the both the earth crust and the living organisms they are made up of the same elements but the composition is different thus there is a difference between the living and non living organism or a component now question comes how to analyze the chemical composition how can we analyze the comp chemical composition of a substance so now for this what will we do okay what should we do what is the procedure for this let's find out so first of all we will take a living tissue means you can take any tissue from the living organism whatever part like it can be a vegetable it can be a piece of liver pancreas any component that you want to analyze okay so first we will take a living tissue second we will grind it in a pestle mortar in a mortar and the pestle i hope everybody that you've seen the mortar and pestle is there anybody who has seen it no okay देखिए घर में आपने ओखली देखी है ओखली जिसमें आप कुछ भी कूटते हैं राइट सो इट इज अ मिनी वर्जन ऑफ दैट जिसको हम कुंडी सोटा भी कहते हैं ठीक है इट अ मिनी वर्जन ऑफ दैट सो इन दिस वी विल बी पुटिंग द पीस ऑफ द वेजिटेबल और द लिवर और द पैनक्रियाज वट एवर पीस वी आर एनालाइजिंग राइट so we'll put a uh, you can say that tissue into this like suppose we are putting into here let's suppose this is a tissue we are putting into it okay now then what will we do we'll try to grind it and slowly and gradually we'll be adding the trichloroacetic acid into it so we'll be grinding this tissue in the pestle mortar and we'll be adding trichloroacetic acid so slowly and gradually we are grinding it and we are adding the trichloroacetic acid into it and in this manner we can easily prepare a thick slurry a paste will be produced okay a slurry will be produced clear now what will we do now we'll take a beaker okay everyone we'll take a beaker let's suppose this is the beaker in the beaker we'll put a funnel okay we will put a funnel and in the funnel we will apply some cheese cloth or the cotton cloth like this we can apply here let's suppose this is the cotton cloth or the cheese cloth and we will pour the thick paste into the into this funnel jo thick paste humne banaya hai wo hum is pe insert kar denge so here we will be putting into it so we have inserted the paste that we have made into the into the funnel Now slowly and gradually the filtration process will occur. ठीक है आपका आपका जो प्रोसेस है फिल्ट्रेशन हो जाएगा एंड सम ऑफ द कॉम्पोनेंट्स यू विल ऑप्टेन इन इन द बीकर कुछ कॉम्पोनेंट जो है यहाँ से फिल्टर होकर आपके नीचे पहुँच जाएंगे बीकर में पहुँच जाएंगे ठीक है एंड सम पार्ट्स विच विल नॉट बी एबल टू फिल्टर इट सेल्फ दे विल बी लेफ्ट ऑन दी ऑन दी कॉटन सो नाउ बेसिकली यू हैव टू पार्ट्स इफ यू talk about more technical words so you are left with two parts the part which has filtered itself and has reached the bottom of the beaker this portion is called as filtrate what do we call it as filtrate okay we call it as filtrate while the second portion which is unable to pass the cotton cloth and reach the filter that is called the retentate what do we call it as retentate retentate okay so now we have obtained the two parts one is filtrate and second is retentate i hope i am clear everyone okay so now i can see i have got the two parts filtrate and the retentate the filtrate is also called as acid soluble pool okay it is called as acid soluble p pool because the things which are soluble in acid they will easily pass through the cotton or your cheese cloth and they will be found in the filtrate second retentate that is unable to filter filter itself through the cheese cloth or the cotton 
is referred to as acid insoluble fraction okay so filtrate is basically your acid soluble fraction and retentate is acid insoluble fraction in the filtrate when we'll analyze we'll found the filtrate consists of micromolecules okay the filtrate will consist of micromolecules while the retentate will consist of macromolecules now let's understand what are micro and what is macromolecules micromolecules they have a molecular weight less than 1000 dalton jo aapke micromolecules hain bete inka jo weight hai wo 1000 dalton se kam hoga while the macromolecules are the ones which have their molecular weight weight greater than 1000 dalton so there is first there is a difference in weight the ones which have lesser than 1000 delta they are called as micromolecules which has more than that of 1000 delta they are called macromolecules your filtrate most mostly represent the cytoplasmic composition while your retentate it contains some molecules from the cytoplasm as well as the organelles now second uh, part of this analysis will talk about the analysis of in organic compounds in living organisms so what are the various inorganic compounds that are present in the organisms now for this what will we do first of all we will obtain the living tissue sabse pehle hum kya karenge ki hum living tissue obtain karenge whether it is a plant or from an animal now we will weigh it theek hai hum uska weigh karenge usko weight karenge so this weight will be called as wet weight what do we call it as wet weight so humne tissue obtain kiya us tissue ko weigh kiya aur is tissue ko hum kahen is is weight ko hum kahenge wet weight now second is now let's suppose this is w1 okay this is w1 your wet weight is w1 now we will dry this tissue in the sun okay we will dry the tissue clear everyone we will dry the tissue so when we'll dry it water will evaporate from the tissue now we will again wait so that will be called as a dry weight let's suppose the dry weight is w2 so can we calculate the amount of water that has evaporated from the tissue tell me everyone first we took the tissue and we weighed it and we called it as wet weight second we allowed the tissue to uh, we we have kept the tissue in the sun so that water can easily evaporate from it and now after drying it we are again weighing it so this will be called as dry weight and we are labeling it as w2 so can you tell me how uh, how much water has evaporated from the tissue can you calculate yes very good so if we <coughs> w1 minus w2 अगर हम दोनों वेट का माइन को सब्ट्रैक कर दें इफ वी सब्ट्रैक द ड्राई वेट फ्रॉम द नेट वेट वी विल इजीली ऑप्टेन द अमाउंट ऑफ वाटर दैट हैज इवेपोरेटेड हमें आसानी से वो अमाउंट मिल जाएगी जितना पानी उस वेट से वेपोरेट हुआ है ना आफ्टर दिस आफ्टर वी हैव वी हैव ड्राइड द टिश्यू नाउ वी विल बर्न द टिश्यू हमने टिश्यू को ड्राई किया है अब हम इस टिश्यू को बर्न करेंगे so when we'll burn it you are left with an ash jab hum kisi cheez ko jalayenge to wo raakh mein convert ho jayega okay now this ash basically contains your inorganic elements like calcium magnesium etc and some of the inorganic compounds like sulfate phosphate okay clear so ash will contain your inorganic elements as well as your inorganic compounds now from the chemistry point of view we can ident easily identify the functional groups like aldehydes ketones aromatic compounds but from a biological point of view we will classify them into amino acids fatty acids etc theek hai jab humne analysis kiya hai to hum chemistry ke point se bahut aasani se functional groups detect kar sakte hain but from the biological point of view hum iske andar we will look out for the amino acids and the fatty acids 
Now let's compare the elements that are present in living and non-living matter. In the beginning itself, if you remember, in the very first slide, dear students, I talked about the comparison between the living and non-living. And we talked about the various elements. See, in case of living and non-living, we have hydrogen element is present, carbon is present, oxygen is present, nitrogen, sulfur, sodium, calcium, magnesium, silicon. So, these are the elements which are present in both. Now, this is a composition of earth crust and this is a composition of human body. Just look at this and just try to find out the differences and similarities. Now, when we see this, we observe that in case of earth crust, the oxygen present at 46.6%, while in case of living organism or humans, it is 65%. Right? Carbon, which is approximately 0.03% in earth crust, here it is 18%, 18.5%. Hydrogen, which is 0.1%, 1, 1%, it is 0.5%. So, in a human body or in a living organism, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, they are present in more quantity. The concentration is more, the amount is more. But there is one more difference if you look at it. In the earth crust, the silicon is 27.7%. That is approximate 28% silicon is present. While in case of human being, negligible amount of silicon is present. So, from this table, we can clearly understand the various elements that are present in the living and the non-living matter. Okay? Now, coming to the bio-micromolecules. Now, just a few seconds before we were talking about the micromolecules and the macromolecules. Micromolecules, I hope you remember. The micromolecules are the molecules that have molecular mass less than 1000 Delton. These are molecules that have mass 1000 Delton. And they are always present in the, in the filtrate. These are present in the filtrate. Or the acid soluble part mein hote. Acid soluble part. Okay. Generally their mass lies between 18 to 800 Daltons. Generally jo hain ka mass 18 se 800 Dalton ke beech mein hota hai. And these are your amino acids, lipids, sugars and nitrogen bases. But out of these four lipids, they will never be present in the acid soluble part. So lipids are not present in filtrate, they present in your retentate. Present Can anybody tell me the reason why? Why we will observe, why we will find lipids in retentate, not in filtrate, although it's a micromolecule. Now lipids basically, dear students, it forms spheres it forms spherical missiles and those missiles they can they cannot filter through your cheesecloth or the cotton thus it will be although it is a micromolecule but you will obtain it on in on the retentate so now we'll be talking about each one of them separately amino acid lipid sugars and a nitrogen basis Coming to the first, that is called amino acid. So, amino acids. Now, let's talk about the amino acids first. Now, just look at this. Let's talk about the structure first, then you will be able to understand. Just look at this, this diagram. I'm magnifying this diagram for you. Now, see, there is one carbon present. Okay. There is one carbon present. On one side of the carbon there is a carboxyl group attached to it. So, this is your carboxyl group. Second, there is an amino group. On the third side, we have one hydrogen atom attached to it. And on the fourth side, there is an R group. This R group basically, dear students, is called as 
this R group is called as variable group. Okay, this is called as variable group. Variable group means it keeps on changing. It is different in different amino acids. Rest all the three, they remain same. Okay, so one side we have carboxyl group. On the another side we have amino group. On another side we have hydrogen atom. And on the last, that is the fourth side, we have a R group, which is called your variable group. Or it is also called as side chain and this will be different in different amino acids. Okay. Now here in this there is only single carbon present. And on the single carbon you have your you have your methyl group as well sorry amino group as well as your carboxyl group. Both your groups they are present on the same carbon. So that is why this carbon is referred to as alpha carbon. Okay. Carboxyl group and your amino group both are present on the same carbon. That is why this carbon is called as alpha carbon and these amino acids they will be called as alpha amino acids. Okay, they will be called as alpha amino acids. Okay, because it is, ma it is made up of alpha, alpha carbons. Sometimes they can also be called as Constitu substituted methanes. What do we call them as? Substituted methanes. Let's talk about substituted methanes. Substituted methanes. Now tell me everyone, do you know the structure of methane? Have you heard about methane? Yes, very good. Okay, so let's talk about the structure of methane first. See, in methane you have a carbon. And you have hydrogen atom attached on all the sides. Okay. Methane ke structure mein agar hum dekhi, to ek carbon present hai aur uske charo taraf aap ek char hydrogens present hote hain. So now just compare the structure of this. So we, if we compare the alpha amino acids with the, with the methane, we will find that there is a difference in three places in case of methanes. Instead of H, here we have C double OH. Instead of this H, we have amino group. And instead of this H, we have a R group. So, three hydrogen atoms have been replaced with carboxyl group, amino group and the R group. And that is why these alpha amino acids, they are also called as the substituted methanes. Okay, they are called as substituted methanes clear okay let's come back now just see this now depending upon this R group as I told you this R group is different in different amino acids now, depending upon this R, we can have 500 amino acids. Our, jo hai, 500 amino acids. Ho sakte hai. But in our genetic code, there is only 20 amino acids. In our genetic code, there are only 20 amino acids. Hai. So, we will be focusing on those 20 amino acids. Okay? I hope I am this, this much is clear to everyone. And the phys you can say the chemical properties of a of a amino acid. It depends the chemical and the physical properties depends on the amino group, the carboxyl group, and as well as your R group. Now let's see this. Just look at this. The first structure. See this hydrogen. अगर हम नॉर्मल अमाइनो एसिड के स्ट्रक्चर को इसके साथ कंपेयर करते हैं देखिए नॉर्मल स्ट्रक्चर क्या होता है अभी अभी हमने बात की है लाइक वी हैव दिस नॉर्मल स्ट्रक्चर एच हियर वी हैव आर ग्रुप हियर वी हैव मिथाइल ग्रुप अमाइनो ग्रुप एनएच2 एंड हियर वी हैव कार्बोक्सिल ग्रुप नो जस्ट कंपेयर दिस स्ट्रक्चर विद विद दिस दिस फर्स्ट स्ट्रक्चर सो वी ऑब्जर्व दैट इंसटेड ऑफ आर वी हैव हाइड्रोजन प्रेजेंट हियर Yes. So instead of R, we have hydrogen. So this can, where we have replaced hydrogen. So this forms your amino acid, which is called named as glycine. 
so glycine has hydrogen in place of r aldehyde has methyl group in place of r okay then it forms aldehyde and amino acid while serine has methyl hydroxide okay so we have three amino acids if we re replace r that is your side chain or your variable group if you replace it with h it forms glycine if you replace it with methyl group it forms aldehyde and if you replace it with methyl hydroxide it forms serine so three amino acids okay now amino acids can be categorized into three basic types one is the acidic amino acid basic amino acid neutral amino acid okay now at ph 7 okay if the ph is 7 okay if the ph is 7 normal ph is 7 and your side chain okay your side chain basically i if i told you the side chain behaves as a as a acidic portion then it is called as it is referred to as acidic amino acid so it is your glutamic acid is your acidic amino acid lysine is your basic amino acid while valine is a neutral amino acid means it has a ph of 7 while your acidic amino acid has a ph less than 7 and your basic amino acid has a ph more than 7 okay now some amino acids they are also referred to as aromatic amino acids they are called as aromatic amino acids big Be why because they contain rings present in their ring structures present in in them so that is why they are referred to as aromatic amino acids because they contain aromatic ring a ring is present in their structure so example is tyrosine phenylalanine tryptophan these are the three examples which contain a ring aromatic ring in their structure now as i told you we can have more than 500 amino acids but out of these only 20 amino acids they uh, are present in the genetic code this means they help in protein synthesis or they take part in the protein synthesis now coming to this there are uh, as i told you there are 20 amino acids out of these 20 amino acids 10 they are referred to as polar amino acid 10 they are referred to as non polar so 10 are polar 10 are non polar non polar means they they are repelled by water molecule to ye wo amino acids hain jo pani se dur bhagte hain okay so these are the, uh, i have listed here all the 10 amino acids like glycine alanine valine cysteine proline leucine isoleucine methionine tryptophan and phenylalanine now glycine it is represented by in, in short we can write it as gly and its symbol is g alanine ala and its symbol is a valine is val or v cysteine is cys or c proline is pro or p likewise we have iso sorry leucine as l isoleucine li isoleucine is i methionine is met m tryptophan trip w phenylalanine phef so their symbols and their short forms are very very important dear students we must remember them okay they will be highly used in your class 12 so they are very important you must remember their their short forms now apart from this there are three amino acids which are positively charged okay because the side chain is positively charged so an amino acid is positively charged if its side chain is positively charged so here the r group that we were talking about is referred to as your side chain or your variable group that is your positively charged just look at this so it becomes positively charged your side chain is positively charged so this amino acid positively charged here also here also so the three amino acids which are positively charged are lysine arginine and histidine now coming to the polar amino acids as i told you they are attracted by water ye wo amino acids hain jo pani ke sath pani ki taraf attract hote hain and that is why you will find 
these amino acids to be present always on the surface. ये amino acids आपको surface पर मिलेंगे because they are always soluble in water. So there are ten amino acids which are soluble. I have listed a five here, like serine. Symbol is S E R or S. Threonine T, tyrosine T Y, aspergine N, glutamine Q. Now apart from this, there are two amino acids which are negatively charged because their side chain is negatively charged. So this is the side chain as you can see in the picture. So aspartic acid and glutamic acid they are negatively charged acids. So three amino acids are positively charged. Two amino acids are negatively charged. And apart from polar and non-polar, ten amino acids are polar. Ten amino acids are non-polar. Any doubt, anyone? Okay. So let's continue then. Now, amino acid. Another way of classifying the amino acids is classifying them as essential and non-essential. See all the twenty amino acids; they are important for our body. They are important for the normal functioning. They are important for the protein synthesis. Now, why do we refer them as essential, non-essential? ये जो term है, ये इसलिए है कि ये हमारी body के अंदर हैं या नहीं हैं. All twenty amino acids की हमें ज़रूरत है हमारी body के functioning के लिए. Essential वो amino acids हैं जिन्हें हमें बाहर से खाना important है. मीन्स ये वो अमाइनो एसिड्स हैं जो हमारी बॉडी में नहीं बनाए जा सकते दिस दे हैव टू दे हैव टू बी टेकन फ्रॉम आउटसाइड ये हमें बाहर से लेने हैं डाइट के थ्रू सो दैट इज़ योर लाइसिन ल्यूसिन आइसोल्यूसिन ट्रिप्टोफेन दीज आर द फ्यू एग्जांपल्स सो असेंशियल अमाइनो एसिड्स आर द वंस दैट हैव टू बी टेकन फ्रॉम आउटसाइड आर बॉडी के नॉट प्रिपेयर दैम नॉन असेंशियल मीन्स दोज अमाइनो एसिड्स विच आर बॉडी कैन प्रिपेयर ये हमारी बॉडी में बनाए जा सकते हैं इसलिए हम इन्हें हमें बाहर से लेने की ज़रूरत नहीं है सो ग्लाइसिन एलनिन सेरिन आर्जन दिस आर ऑल मेड इनसाइड योर बॉडी नाउ वी कैन इजीली रिमेंबर दीज असेंशियल नॉन असेंशियल अमाइनो एसिड्स सी वी नो दैट देर आर ट्वेंटी अमाइनो एसिड्स आउट ऑफ दोज ट्वेंटी एट आर असेंशियल एंड ट्वेल्व आर नॉन असेंशियल यानी बारह वो अमाइनो एसिड्स हैं जिन्हें बॉडी अपने आप बना लेती है Now, if we remember the essential, अगर हमें ये आठ amino acids याद हों तो we can easily uh, see that if they are included in the eight, they are essential. If they are not included in the eight, they are non-essential. So we have a short synonym that to remember this. So हमारे हमा, जो essential amino acids हैं वो हैं हमारे methionine, threonine, valine, phenylalanine, isoleucine, tryptophan, lysine, and leucine. Now we can easily remember them through a rhyme. That is, my tall wagon, my tall wagon friend is watering the leaves. My tall wagon friend is watering the leaves. Now here, my means methionin, tall means thionin, wagon, wagon means we, we means valine, friend, yani f. F is a symbol for phenylalanine, so F means phenylalanine. Is 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 I I means I solution. Watering watering W W means tryptophan. Kale K K means lysine. Leaves L L mean leucin. So if you remember this time, we can easily remember the eight essential amino acids. I hope you like this. Okay. So we got to remember the eight essential amino acids. Now coming to this, amino acids, they are ionizable in nature. Ionizable in nature means they form ions. Okay, they form ions. So we will observe. We will observe that the structure of the amino acid it changes in solutions of different pH. सो अगर हम अमाइनो एसिड को अलग अलग पी के सोल्यूशन में ऐड कर देते हैं तो उनका स्ट्रक्चर मॉडिफाई हो जाता है ओके नाउ जस्ट लेट्स डिस्कस दिस सपोज नाउ इनिशियली वी नो दैट वी हैव वी नो द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ कॉम सिंपल स्ट्रक्चर द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अमाइनो एसिड वी हैव अ कार्बोक्साइल ग्रुप वी हैव अमाइनो ग्रुप एंड वी हैव 
H and the R group. So all four sides. Now what basically happens when we put them in solution. So this carboxyl group, it loses its hydrogen. Okay, it loses its hydrogen atom ko lose kar hai and it gets transferred here. So because of this, there is an intermediate structure. So there is a transfer of hydrogen from the hydroxyl group to the amino group. And there is a requirement of positive charge on the amino and there is a requirement of negative charge on the carboxyl group. And this structure is basically referred to as Zwitter ion form. We call this structure as Zwitter ion form. So at different pH of, uh, in different solutions of different pH, you will find that amino acids, they will ionize and they will form a Zwitter ion form. Okay. They will form a Zwitter ion form which is formed by transfer of hydrogen from carboxyl to the amino group. So they basically exist in the form of Zwitter ions in, in solutions. So amino acids, they exist in Zwitter ions in the solutions. I hope this much is clear everyone. If there is any doubt anybody has. Okay. So for today... You will be making notes of this topic. You will be reading the page numbers 142 to 144. And if there is any doubt, you will ask me personally. Okay. You can send your queries to me. And don't forget to underline the important words which are highlighted with black in your NCRT. Okay, everyone. Okay. So that's all for today. Bye, everyone.